Hello, thank you so much for stopping by. My name is Melissa with one S, but you can call me Mel. I'm dealing with a thrip infestation. So I figured I might as well share this with you. You are subscribed to my channel and I'm sharing with you my plant mom journey. So this is part of it. <laughs> and hopefully you can appreciate that I am sharing this with you. This is the reality, the not so glamorous side of house plant collecting. If you are also dealing with thrips, let me know and we can support each other down below in the comments. So let's go ahead, get to work, and I'm just gonna take you with me and show you what I'm gonna be doing to deal with this thrip infestation. So this is my plant room, and this is where the infestation happened. If you watched my house plant tour plant room videos a few weeks back, then <laughs> this room is looking a lot different than a few weeks ago and I've moved all the plants where I've already noticed thrips or at least like the adult ones for sure. Um, those plants I have to inspect, they have like the small white thrips on them and those I'm gonna have to spray because right on that shelf is where the first plants that I noticed thrips were. So I had my Alocasia Regal Shield there, I had my Monstera Adansonii Neriform and then I had my Syngonium White Butterfly beside it. And my Syngonium is the one that I think is the culprit, but I have no idea now. So here is who I think the culprit is of the whole situation, and it's my Syngonium White Butterfly. Long story short, I thought it needed a watering and it was just dry, so I watered it, but then I could see that there were more yellow leaves, so I was confused. When I inspected it, I saw that it did have thrips. So I'm just gonna give you a close up. Uh, as you see, there's a yellow leaf there and there, and there's just droopy leaves. It's because these thrips are sucking up the nutrition from the leaves, right? So I'll show you a close up of what the thrips look like. My fiance is just gonna use his little cell phone flashlight so that hopefully I can show you. So if you don't like bugs, <laughs> look away for a second, but I do want to show you what to look out for. So here is one close up. So you see that black dot, that is a thrip. If I get any closer, it's going to go blurry. But I would recommend looking at the crevices of the leaves, because it's almost like they sit in between where the veins are. There are another two thrips. One is in that middle veining. And then you see another one walking in more of the side veining. Here is a close-up of the middle age thrips. So all that white are middle aged thrips. And then you see like the sappy stuff. But I just wanted to give you a close-up of these guys as well. You can see them moving. Yeah, gross. Here is where I put my alocasia, just outside the bathroom uh, at the top of the staircase because there are a few of them on here as well. But because this only has four leaves, it's a lot easier to treat versus a plant that has more leaves. And then I'll show you where some of my other plants are. I moved my long micans into my bedroom because there's a lot of leaves on this one too. I think I just saw one adult thrip on this. So again, another plant I had to move that way no other plant could you know infest it even further so that's another one and then in my bathroom here is where i have my El Chaco red and my monstera thai constellation which is uh, dealing with a yellowing leaf i did see one thrip on this one and i did see a couple of thrips on this one as well so I'm more freaked out about losing these, but I just separated them because again, I don't want them to continue to get infested because it's just a few that I've noticed and I wanna monitor them as much as I can here in my bedroom. Now in the spare room, I have my Philodendron Silver Sword and in my last video, I talked about how it did have a yellowing leaf and I cut it off. Now it has another yellowing leaf and obviously I, know now that it's due to thrips like I just that's what I'm assuming at this point and it still has a new growth point which is nice got to see the silver lining in it and I have a few other plants in this room I have my hanging micans uh, here that is losing leaves quite a bit so I have to spray this one down 
but because I have the other micans, I don't know if I'm gonna wanna salvage this one because again, it has a lot of foliage. It's gonna be harder to treat, so we'll see. I'm debating on this one, but I, again, I am still going to try. And then the other plant I have in this room is my Syngonium Albo, which I noticed some thrip damage on. I'll give you a close-up of what that looks like. So you see at the top that discoloration, that is thrip damage. And I did find some thrips on this leaf, so I'll have to spray it down. So right there I spotted a thrip right in the middle of the screen. Like I said, I do find them in the veining or in the crevices of the leaves. So just something to make sure you're looking at uh, when inspecting your leaves. And then lastly, on the other side of the spare room, I have my Monstera Adansonii narrow form, which you can see a couple of the leaves are damaged. And then I have a small Syngonium and then a small Micans, which I found a couple on because they were close to these other plants. So yeah, so I've already isolated the plants that I've seen thrips on. So we're gonna go ahead and do our mixture so that we can start spraying and cleaning. All right, so now we're gonna talk a bit about the treatment that I will be doing. I may actually do two separate sprays. So I have this one, which is just dish soap and water. So I may go around and spray the plants first with this and wipe them down because I don't have space to put them all in the shower or the bathtub. Like it's just way too many plants to do that. It's gonna take me forever. I mean, this is gonna take me forever too, but at least I can be proactive and take some of those extra bugs off and whatever. One thing I didn't mention is that yesterday in the evening, I actually went around and used tape around my fingers and a flashlight and I just like stuck the tape on leaves where I saw thrips on. So that's something I also did ahead of time and I'll kind of give you a little snapshot of it at some point of this video. But the other spray that I'm going to be doing is an actual treatment. So I do use the Bug Be Gone um, concentrate. So in the last video uh, about treatment, you would have seen that I used the spray, but I recently found that they actually have a concentrate, which is the same price and it'll go a long way. I found that the spray that came with the bottle and everything probably just lasted for one plant, which was my Monstera. So I think this one's gonna last a lot longer. You have to put four teaspoons of this concentrate in one liter of water. So I reuse my pop bottles of, and I keep them around for a while to hold water, like rainwater. So this is two liters. So basically I'm going to take four teaspoons of this and then put it into this bottle. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to refill this spray with the concentrate in this bottle. So again, I feel like the concentrate is gonna go a longer way with how many plants I have to treat. And I'll leave a link in the description if you are interested in using the same treatment. So I just wanted to give you the info on what I'm gonna be doing. I'll probably wait for this evening to spray the plants with this spray, but I'm just gonna go around and spray some of the plants with just the soap and the water for now. Okay, so I just watched that last clip and I promise you I know how to do simple math, but I said the wrong amount. So this, uh, the instructions say for one liter of water is four teaspoons. So I just used a measuring spoon and this is two liters. So it's eight spoons for this bottle and I will be putting it into this spray bottle, which I got at the dollar store for $3. It has a little bit more of a heavier spray, I guess, uh, heavy duty. So yeah, so that's what I'm gonna be using and I'm gonna fill this up. So 
before I start spraying some plants, I wanted to show you what I mentioned earlier about the tape. So when I found some adult thrips on my alocasia regal shield, because it only has four leaves, I found this to be a quick treatment right away. I mean, obviously more temporary, but I grabbed some painter's tape because it tends to be a little less sticky than like masking tape or duct tape because what you don't want to do is damage the foliage. So I just grabbed tape like this and then I grabbed the big leaves. Now I used a flashlight like from my phone and I was flashing the light from the bottom and I can see where the thrips were. So I was able to just stick the adult thrips onto the tape. And I found this to be really helpful because um, it was in the evening that I did this and I found them like that moment. So it was something I could do right away without having to worry about spraying that night. And like I said, because it has less foliage, it was pretty quick. I would say 15 minutes where I was able to grab the leaves, the front and the back, make sure I can grab as many adult thrips in the moment. But I definitely wouldn't be doing it on a plant like this because it has so much foliage that the thrips can really hide in all the crevices of the foliage. So it's definitely better to use a spray. All right, so I figured I will chat with you for a bit while I'm spraying at least one of the plants. Uh, so first things first, I would definitely put gloves on just because thrips can kind of nibble at your skin because <laughs> ultimately what they're doing to the leaves is they're sucking up the nutrition from the leaves, right? So uh, they can bite your skin. It's already happened to me as well. So gloves and I have just a microfiber cloth and then I have my spray. So I'm just going to go ahead and spray it, but also kind of like massage it into the foliage just to kind of spray off any extra stuff. It is gonna get messy because like I said, I, I don't know if I'm gonna do all my plants in the shower or the bathtub, but uh, there are a few like my Monstera that I'm going to do in the shower and I'll show you that. But for this one, there's just, well, my fiance is also upstairs sleeping, so <laughs> I don't wanna wake him up because I'm taking care of plants, so. Something I did want to mention is that you can definitely use beneficial bugs, uh, but, but to be honest, I haven't explored that route yet and I'm kind of scared, or not scared, but kinda, obviously don't know what to expect. So yeah, let me know what uh, you think and how it's worked out for you if you have used beneficial bugs. I may end up using beneficial bugs if it ends up being, you know, a little too out of control with the thrips in the future because obviously when it comes to thrips, I do have to treat it multiple times. I don't know, um, you know, how many months it's going to take. I just have to keep treating it at least once a week, basically. And I have, I think, a, about 10 plants that I have to treat right now. Uh, but I'll probably end up doing most of my plants. Something else I did want to mention is that you may not want to do this to a plant if you're just willing to get rid of it because having thrips is um, quite a big deal and it is a lot of work, especially as the plant caregiver. So I would obviously ask yourself, am I willing to spend time treating all these plants? Am I willing to, you know, pay for the treatments? Am I willing to make time for it? You know, does this plant bring me joy or should I just get rid of it? So these are all questions that you can ask yourself before you decide that you want to spend the time treating them. So me, I'm just still trying to figure out whether or not I'm willing to, but we'll see what happens. As of right now, I am going to try to treat my plants at least once and then uh, depending on how they react, if in a week they're, you know, hanging in there and push, still pushing out new growth, then I'll probably keep them. But there are a few plants that I will probably get rid of. Another reason why you decide to not treat a plant and just get rid of it is if you have multiples of one. Um, so if you have duplicates, then maybe it's worth just getting rid of one of them, but that's just a personal choice. So now I brought my silver sword, which I'm actually debating on cutting this leaf because it's really yellow.
And I think I am going to go ahead and cut it. And I see that there's like a growth point there, so I'll probably cut it like right here. And this is going to go in the garbage. And then I'm just going to, I'm going to have to grab some cinnamon. And then I'm just going to spray this one down now. You do want to also um, clean off the stems or the petioles just in case. Okay, and then I'm going to set this aside. And now I'm going to go ahead and treat this guy with the actual treatment. I'm just massaging the leaf so that it all gets covered. I'm going to let this sit for a bit. I'm going to go over here now. All right, so on to the next plant. It's my Monstera adansonii narrow form. So a few things that I've done off camera, because if I show you everything that's going on, this video is going to be about three hours long. So <laughs> I'm just kind of giving you snippets of things that I'm doing. So one of the things I've been doing uh, with the Syngonium and the Silver Sword, which you saw I cut pieces of the leaves, one was broken and ripped off while I was cleaning it, and then another leaf that was browning. And then with my Syngonium elbow, it's just on the side here, I cut off any small foliage or any damaged foliage where it just, there was no point in keeping that foliage because it's going to continue to die or crisp or whatever. So I'm just going to show you what I'm going to do with this Monstera. So also off camera, I've been washing my hands every single time I'm switching my kind of task and plant and then also cleaning the scissors. So one of the things I'm going to do is cut off any yellowing foliage on this Monstera. Anything that I feel is just not worth keeping and maybe is dying off, yellowing, all of that, or maybe it's just too damaged for me to keep. I think I've taken off a few of them already. Um, I think I'm gonna keep that one. So yeah, I did take off some, so this one, there's no leaf up here, so I'm just gonna take it off all the way down there. I'm not gonna even bother propagating this because just in case I can avoid any bugs. I've already sprayed it down with the soap and water and just let, I let it sit already. So now I'm gonna go in with the actual treatment. So again, this is a plant that has a lot of foliage. Uh, also something I did after the last clip is I went again <laughs> in uh, both of the plants. I inspected in and around the leaves. Um, so I probably just took another 20 minutes after that last clip just to make sure that I didn't miss anything because uh, ultimately I just want you to see what I'm doing and hopefully you know it's helpful in some way and or you just want to hang out with me and watch me take care of my plants either or <laughs> I'm, I'm good with it and it's almost Time for my fiance to wake up anyways. He works nights, so uh, once he wakes up, I'm gonna go and show you some of the other plants that I'm gonna be putting in the shower. 
I honestly don't know why I don't clean my plants more often because I find like it's almost therapeutic to clean them and just take some time focusing on your plants versus, you know, work or whatever other house chore you have to do. Also, I did spray the top of the soil. Now, is that gonna do anything? I have no idea. I think there is a product that you can put on the surface of the soil. I was just talking to someone on Instagram about it. I can't think of a name right now, but let me know if you use something for the top of the soil when it comes to pests and stuff. So these leaves are quite small. I'm also going to bring it back a bit. I'm not going to worry too much about these little ones. Also, I am wearing glasses, like eyeglasses, <laughs> to see. So maybe just in case so that the solution doesn't fly into your eyes, you can wear some sort of glasses, like safety glasses, or you know, maybe just uh, clear sunglasses, or I don't know, goggles. <laughs> just because, uh, you, yeah, it's important to make sure it doesn't go into your eyes. Some people may say you also need to put a mask on. I'm not doing that. So do as I say, not as I do. <laughs> okay, I am in my ensuite bathroom now, which is a stand-up shower. And I'm going to treat my Monstera Peru and my Syngonium Albo. I was wondering if I could fit my big Monstera, like the one that's in my plant room, but I don't think so. I'm gonna have to do her separate. All right, so these two plants are just sitting here with the treatment. I did both sprays. So I'm just gonna leave them here while I continue to treat other plants and then move them into the spare room. Next, I have my Philodendron micans, the one that's in a hanging planter that's looking very, very rough. Uh, so I'm gonna try to salvage some of it, but if most of the leaves are damaged, I'm probably going to just throw it out, but we'll see what we're left with. All right, so not too bad. I took off a decent amount, but I'm just gonna hold off and wait to see how the plant reacts to the first treatment. And then if needed, I'll take off more leaves if I feel like they're too damaged or, you know, just not doing well. All right, so my alocasia regal shield is just sitting in the treatment right now. And so is my micans. I think these are the last two plants I'm going to show you because I do have a few more to go and I don't want to <laughs> bore you. All right, folks, so like I said earlier, I hope you appreciate that I shared this part of being a plant parent with you. And if you have any suggestions, recommendations, or maybe some feedback, let me know because this is the first time I'm dealing with a full thrip infestation. I've had, you know, a couple of plants here and there, but this one's a bit more scary. So let me know if there's anything else that I can do. And thank you so much to everyone that's subscribed. This past week I actually reached 1,000 and counting, which is amazing. It just uh, like I just I just can't believe it and I'm just so so grateful for everyone that watches my videos everyone that's connected with me through YouTube and Instagram the comments the likes like all of it it just it's so great uh, because something that I'm just doing 
you know, as a hobby and just because I'm interested in plants and I like sharing it with you guys has now become something that just really motivates me every week to turn the camera on and share with you because I know how helpful it is and you know, we get to connect uh, even if it is virtually. So thank you, thank you, thank you so much. I, I appreciate it and I will see you soon.